Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror film named A Nightmare on Elm Street. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins on a rainy night on Elm Street, where the Springwood Diner seemed particularly desolate, with only one customer inside, whose name is Russell. Russell called out to the approaching waitress, asking her to refill his coffee cup, but no matter how loud he shouted, the waitress acted as if she hadn't heard and disappeared behind the bar. Puzzled, Russell happened to go into the kitchen, where a fire suddenly broke out on the counter. The disgusting ingredients made him even more agitated. Just as he was about to leave, a set of steel claws reached out from behind and closed in step by step, suddenly pouncing on Russell. Fortunately, Nancy, who was working part-time as a waitress here, woke him up in time. However, his hand had real wounds, indicating that this was not just a nightmare. At this time, another customer named Chris arrived at the Springwood Diner and saw Russell's injured hand. Russell told her that he hadn't slept for three days and had been having nightmares because of childhood trauma. Both of them panicked. Accidentally, Russell spilled coffee on Chris's clothes, so she went to the restroom to clean up. Russell was exhausted and closed his eyes, but nightmare killer, Freddy, immediately appeared to flex his monstrous muscles, picking up a knife to kill Russell. Chris rushed back to see Russell shoving in his sleep before the knife stabbed him in the neck. At the funeral, Chris cried with sorrow. In her sleep, a young Chris was attacked by the same nightmare killer. Upon waking up, she discovered that she and Russell were actually kindergarten classmates. Chris believed that Russell didn't end his own life, but got killed. At this point, Nancy approached and said she believed Chris's judgment, but she was soon stopped by a boy named Jesse, who had some hormone crush on Chris. That night, Nancy took a sip of water and was about to fall asleep when Freddy crawled out from within the wall, deliberately scaring Nancy to pee her pants. Startled awake, Nancy looked at the water glass she had just used. The droplet was still in its original position, as if time hadn't passed. Afterward, Chris asked her mother for more of her childhood photos to look for clues, but her mother brushed her off. That night, she went up to the attic and found all of her childhood belongings. Freddy suddenly appeared and overpowered her, asking if she remembered him, but she screamed and woke up from the nightmare. The next day in class, Chris's textbook suddenly showed images of the nightmare killer. She realized she was dreaming, but couldn't wake herself up. Freddy, in his own way, taught her not to sleep during class. Chris screamed and woke up in the classroom. She didn't know why the hideous man wanted to kill her, and the strand of hair in front of her only confirmed that what happened in the dream could really happen. After Chris returned home, her flight attendant mother left for a flight, leaving Chris alone at night. Jesse climbed through the window to confess his love, and during their conversation, they found out that Jesse also had been haunted by the same nightmare killer, Freddy. Chris was afraid to sleep alone, so Jesse decided to comfort her in bed, using his ghost-proof muscles. In the middle of the night, Freddy came to find Chris and apologized, saying he had only touched her dog, which then died. Chris screamed and ran back to her room, but ended up in a kindergarten. Freddy was playing hide-and-seek with the children there. A young Chris pulled a girl and told her to hide quickly. Suddenly, Jesse beside her turned into Freddy, pounced on Chris, and performed an aerial stunt with Chris. Then, he showed off his steel claws and pierced Chris's stomach. Blood splattered on Jesse. Jesse rushed into Nancy's house, telling her that Chris was killed in her sleep and that as long as they didn't sleep, they wouldn't be killed by Freddy. In the end, Jesse was arrested as a criminal by the police. In jail, Jesse still forced himself to stay awake, enduring the night. However, on the second day, he entered Freddy's dream world. He found himself in a boiler room, with Freddy appearing and chasing him. As he ran away, he saw the gruesome corpses of Russell and Chris. Jesse broke down. Suddenly, a steel claw pierced his chest, and in reality, Jess collapsed in the prison cell. Meanwhile, Nancy's best friend, Smith, was searching for drugs that could deprive sleep in the library. Suddenly, everyone around him disappeared, and a little girl appeared at the end of the room. He stood up and searched for the little girl, faintly hearing the sound of a class. He saw a man in a red and green sweater there, seemingly teaching children. Just as he was about to see the man's face, a hand appeared behind him, but it turned out it was Nancy. So he told Nancy that people who don't sleep for long periods of time can experience microsleeves, meaning they wouldn't even notice when they were dreaming, even when they were awake. This statement filled Nancy with fear. That night, Nancy kept drawing to force herself not to sleep. She asked her mother if there was any connection between her and Chris, Jesse, and Russell. 
But her mother evaded the question as if hiding something. Later, Nancy took a bath, intending to take a rest. She couldn't help but close her eyes. However, Freddy quietly extended his steel claws from the water, wanting to give her some massage using his claws. After her bath, Nancy found her bedroom had turned into a snowy landscape. Barefoot, she stepped onto the snow and walked towards Freddy's dream world. She arrived at a school called Bad Impress School. Suddenly, Freddy appeared, affectionately calling her Little Nancy, all grown up. He then cornered her, affectionately kissing and caressing her. At that moment, Smith called and told Nancy the news of Jess's death in his sleep. Terrified, Nancy said she had a nightmare and saw Freddy. Smith quickly took a pill to deprive sleep and rushed to Nancy's house. Nancy believed her mother must be hiding something from them, so they searched the house and accidentally found a preschool graduation photo with Chris, Jesse, Russell, Smith, and Nancy all in it. It turned out they were classmates in preschool. Nancy's mother appeared, and Nancy confronted her about the lies. The mother and daughter argued fiercely, and finally, her mother revealed the memories she wanted Nancy to forget forever. In the preschool where Nancy and her friends attended, there was a gardener named Freddy Krueger who lived in the basement. He often played games with the children, and Nancy was his favorite. Gradually, parents noticed that their children always had injuries. The children claimed that Freddy would often take them to a secret cave. Before the parents could report him to the police for the abuse, Freddy escaped from Springwood. Still, Nancy remained skeptical about her mother's story and decided to find all the children shown in the photo. Afterward, Smith was taking a swimming class. As he swam freestyle in the pool, he found himself in an abandoned factory. He saw a creepy man being chased, who hid in a warehouse. A group of parents armed with tools got out of a car, claiming they wanted revenge for their children. One of the parents, Smith's father, angrily poured gasoline and set the warehouse on fire, determined to send the man straight to meet Satan in hell. The man took off his coat, revealing a red and green sweater. It turned out that Smith had entered Freddy's memories from when he was alive. Freddy charged at Smith in freestyle, who was scared to shit his swimming pants. In reality, Smith spat out some water and immediately woke up. He confronted his father, asking why they didn't call the police, instead of taking matters into their own hands, and claimed that they killed Freddy based on a child's words. He then stormed out, and Nancy hurriedly followed him. After that, she saw Chris lying in a body bag, inviting her to play. Smith told her it was just a hallucination, and they went to find Bad and Preschool. Smith got out of the car to buy medication, but the doctor refused to give it to him due to his disoriented state. Outside, Nancy experienced microsleep, and Freddy rushed into the car, dragging her out. Nancy woke up and burned herself with a car cigarette lighter. Smith didn't return, so she went into the drugstore to find him. As soon as she entered, the lights flickered, and she found herself in the boiler room. Freddy approached, and Nancy fell, tearing his sweater. During the struggle, Freddy's steel claws injured Nancy, indicating she had entered another microsleep. The line between reality and dreams was becoming blurred, and the torn piece of sweater suggested that they might be able to bring Freddy out of the dream world. Later on, Smith took Nancy to the hospital, where he searched a nurse's cart for medication that could keep them awake. He quietly took a syringe of adrenaline. In the operating room, the doctor prepared to give Nancy painkillers, but his hand transformed into steel claws. Nancy panicked in her bed, and her mother was called away. Her mother signed a consent form for a sedative. But luckily, Smith secretly took Nancy out of the hospital. On the road, Smith couldn't bear the exhaustion and injected himself with the adrenaline he took from the hospital. Afterward, Smith expressed his feelings to Nancy. As soon as he finished speaking, Freddy appeared in the middle of the road, and their car crashed into a roadside barrier, forcing them to continue on foot. Behind them, they could faintly hear Freddy's laughter. They finally found the press school and went down to the basement, which seemed to be where Freddy had lived. They discovered a hidden room behind a wall, and Nancy recalled that she had been there when she was young. Smith found a photo of young Nancy being abused. She snatched the photo and realized the truth. Freddy had killed Chris and the others because they had spoken out about what happened. Nancy decided to sleep and pull Freddy out of the dream world, with Smith on watch to wake her up. However, as soon as Nancy closed her eyes, Smith was taken into the dream world by Freddy first. Freddy viciously attacked Smith and told him he couldn't save Nancy. Just then, Nancy's voice came through, and Smith struggled on the ground. Freddy taunted Nancy, asking if she had come to play a game with him, and suggested they go on a date. Nancy hid her body in a closet, but her smell betrayed her. As a result, Freddy appeared right next to her. 
Nancy screamed like a chicken and burst out, only to find herself in a pool of blood plasma. She swam desperately while Freddy laughed, asking how she liked being wet. Slowly, Nancy was submerged in the blood pool and fell from the ceiling. Freddy had dressed Nancy in his favorite dress, and she was restrained in a bed, unable to move. Freddy teased and threatened her, throwing her out of the bed like an adult toy. Nancy grabbed a pair of scissors and stabbed him in the eye, but it didn't hurt him at all. She was thrown back onto the bed and screamed in a chicken voice for Smith to wake her up. Smith returned to reality because of the adrenaline injection and called out to Nancy, struggling to stay awake. Freddy declared himself to be Nancy's boyfriend, and his steel claws slowly extended toward her, possibly to do some Thailand-style massage on her. In reality, Smith took out the syringe and stabbed it into Nancy simultaneously. Nancy woke up in pain, and they managed to pull Freddy out of the dream world. Together, they wrestled muscles with Freddy in bare hands, but still found themselves outmatched. At the time, Smith grabbed a knife and stabbed it into the back of Freddy's knee. Enraged, Freddy was about to execute Smith when his steel claw hand was severed. Smith gave him another slash, causing Freddy's neck to be severed as well. After that, the two set fire to the secret room, seemingly ending it all. However, when Nancy returned home, Freddy appeared in the mirror to flex his ugly figure again. Then, his steel claws pierced her mother's head and dragged her into the mirror, where she could also serve as a flight attendant. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.